Good morning. Welcome to our second week in our online Bible study in the book of Ephesians. Um, I thank you for joining me today. Um, as you can see, we're in the studio now. Last week we were in my office because we hadn't set this up yet. But it looks like we're going to be doing this for, for a while yet to come. So I want to encourage you, if you can, uh, can tune in every week, I will be posting this on Tuesdays. And so if you can tune in, let me know you like it. Um, share it with friends if you want. And just walk with us on this. Um, this is different for me. You might have noticed in my Sunday sermon on Sunday, I paced a little bit. I, I went back and forth like this a little bit because I'm not used to just preaching to a camera. Uh, I like to have people in the audience. Um, I like to have the amen occasionally and have the hand clap and, and just, just that kind of camaraderie that comes with speaking publicly. And so this is a little different, but we are working through this. And so I just want to encourage you today as you're able to just follow along with our Bible study. Uh, we're carrying on <clears throat> in Ephesians chapter 5. And so I just want to thank you for joining me today. Why don't we pray? Father, thank you. Lord, thank you that we can gather even in our living rooms, even in our, our cars, wherever we might be, Lord, that we can gather and we can receive your word this week. And so, Father, I pray this word to be a word of encouragement. I pray this word to be a word of life for somebody today. And so we thank you in your name. Amen. Amen. So we're picking up in Ephesians chapter 5. And last week we talked about this idea of Christian living and, and how we're supposed to live appropriately. In Ephesians chapter 5, Paul is talking about being a light. Paul is, is talking about being children of light. And let me ask you a question. What does it mean to be a light? What does it mean to be a light in the darkness? What does it mean to be a light that shines? What does it mean to be a light in the midst of this Corona-19 situation? What does that mean? Well, being a light can mean several things, but I can remember many times um, camping as a young boy. And I can remember many times being out in the woods and, and it's the middle of the night and you have to use the washroom. And so you have to get up and you get your flashlight and you get out of your tent and it is pitch black. You can't see anything. And all you have is that little flashlight that you take and you use to walk to where you have to use the washroom in the outhouse. And you get there and it's still dark and you hear noises around you. And there's, you depend on that light. You depend on that light. What does it mean to be someone who lives in the light? What does it mean to be that? Well, let's turn to Ephesians chapter 5. You can see it on the screen here, Ephesians chapter 5, verse 1 to 20. And we're going to read this first section, and we're going to just talk about a little bit what it means to be in the light. Ephesians chapter 5, I'm reading from the New Living Translation. Um, you can follow along whichever translation you have. So it says, imitate God, therefore, in everything you do, because you are his dear children. Live a life filled with love, following the example of Christ. He loved us and offered himself as a sacrifice for us, Please, his pleasing aroma to God. Let, us, let there be no sexual immorality, impurity, or greed among you. Such sins have no place among God's people. Obscene stories, foolish talk, coarse jokes and those that are not for you instead let there be a thankfulness to god you can be sure that no immoral impure or greedy person will inherit the kingdom of christ and of god for a greedy person is an idolater worshiping of the things not of this world don't be fooled by those who try to excuse their sins for the anger of god who will fall upon all who disobey him do not participate in the things those people do. For once you were filled with darkness, but you now have the light of the Lord. So live as people of the light. For the light is within you and produces what is good, right, holy, and true. Carefully determine what pleases the Lord. Take no part in worthless deeds of evil and darkness. Instead, expose them. It is shameful even to talk about the things that ungodly people do in secret. But their evil in, <clears throat> in quotations will be exposed in the light that shines on them. For the light makes everything visible. This is why it is said, Awake, O sleeper, rise up from the dead, and Christ will give you light. 
So be careful how you live. Do not live like fools, but the, like those who are wise. Make the most of the make the most of every opportunity in these evil days. Do not act thoughtlessly, but understand what the Lord wants you to do. Do not be drunk with wine, because that will ruin your life. Instead, be filled with the Holy Spirit, singing songs and hymns and spiritual songs among yourselves, and making music to the Lord in your hearts. And give thanks for everything to God the Father in the name of Jesus Christ. What a powerful uh, passage for us to ponder. What's, what, what a thing for us to look at today. As we begin to break down this passage, I want us to just think of a couple things that, that Paul says. First of all, he says, live a life filled with love, following the example of Christ. Now, we, we used to wear those bracelets in the 80s and in the 90s, WWJD, what would Jesus do? And it was a reminder of who, how Jesus would respond in this situation. And so we have to be imitators, be followers, be Christ's example of how he lived how he conducted himself and how he treated others and do you know how we find that out by looking in this book this book is what helps us understand how christ lived this book helps us understand that the second thing that helps us understand how christ lived is having a relationship with him through prayer through talking to him through uh speaking to him and allowing him to impart into us and Near the end of this passage that we just read, Paul talks about be filled with the Holy Spirit. You see, it's when I, I believe is a it, we're, we're a Pentecostal church, and I truly believe that when you come to Christ, you get the Holy Spirit. But there's a second uh, part called the baptism of the Holy Spirit, and that's the infilling, the empowering of the Holy Spirit, which you see in Acts chapter two, and that allows us. That allows us to be able to be that light in the darkness. In the moments, especially in this Corona-19, we're hearing everything coming in. We're hearing this news. You can't go on Facebook without seeing something. You can't, you can't go on the TV without hearing something. You can't go anywhere without this Corona-19 virus coming and impacting our lives in some way. And so I like what a pastor friend of mine said. Well, he's not really a friend of mine. I, I've never met him. But Stephen Furtuck said, Stop! Turn it off and allow God to fill you up. And if we want to be a light in the world, sometimes we have to stop, turn it off, and let God fill us up. As we look at this passage, there's a few other things for us to take note of. Uh, it's, it talks about our lifestyle, living our lifestyle that's a lifestyle that shows that we are followers of Christ. That we willfully choose to abstain from things like sexual immorality. We willfully choose to abstain from things like gossip, from immorality, impurity, drunkenness. And you might say, well, pastor, what if that happens to me? The, Paul's not saying we accidentally fall into that. Paul's not saying that, you know, you're on your computer one day and you accidentally go to a website. Paul's not saying, you know, you, you stub your toe and something comes out of your mouth. That you sh you're like, where did that come from? Paul is saying we willfully need to choose not to do these things. And you know when we accidentally fall into sin, when we stub our toe or someone cuts us off in traffic, and um, we might say something, we might do something that afterwards we're like, why did I say that? Why did I do that? Do you know what that shows you? That shows you that you're a real person. See, sometimes people have this idea. And if you're watching and you have this idea, I apologize that, uh, that people who call themselves Christians have got this idea out there that all of a sudden we become Christians and we turn into this, this perfect human being that never does anything wrong. We don't. As a matter of fact, when we come to Christ, when you come to Christ, there is a there is a, right away a battle that starts to happen between your old self, your sinful nature, your flesh that was there before Christ came in, and now your new um, uh, regenerated self, your, your born-again self. And there's a battle that rages on, and that battle will rage on until you die. That's why Paul says in Scripture, there are things that I do not want to do that I do, and the things that I want to do I don't do. And Paul is basically saying that I'm not perfect. There are things that I'm going to mess up on. There are things that I'm going to fall on my face on. 
And Paul is not saying here you need to be perfect. But you have to understand, Paul is talking to Gentile believers, people who came out of horrible, what we would call terrible situations when it comes to um, religion. Uh, there was a temple call. There was a there was a group that came out of a temple where where they would the, part of the part of the worship was being in bed with a prostitute. There was there was a sacrifice to different gods. There was all this crazy nasty stuff that people had come to Christ out of in Paul's day in the day of the book of Ephesians. And so Paul is basically saying, put that aside, willfully put that aside. And so he's saying to us today, willfully put that aside. If you want to be called a child of light, if you want to be called a Christian, you should willfully put those things aside. You should choose not to partake in them. And the great thing about, about, about the thing about the spirit-filled believer is, excuse me, the Holy Spirit is there to empower us to not do those things. You know, if we listen to the Holy Spirit, he will give us an out when we find ourselves possibly falling into one of these traps. There'll be, the, the Bible talks about a still small voice that will give us that, that, that out, that, 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 that out to be able to not fall into those things. You know, Paul talks in verse 6 about don't being fooled by those who try to excuse their sins. Have you ever run across that? Well, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm not really this. I, I, this just happened. This just forced me. And that's what we like to do, don't you? I know I like to do it. I like to excuse when I choose to want to sin. When I choose to want to do those things that are against what God's word says is right. When I choose to do that, I, I make excuses. I want to justify what uh, my action is. Well, you know, I did that because. Or if a loving God really truly loved me, he'd let me because. And we try to justify it. And Paul says, do not be confused. Do not be um, taken off track by those who try to justify it. Carefully, verse, verse 9, 10 is very, very beautiful. It says, carefully determine what pleases the Lord. Take no part in worthless deeds of evil and darkness. Instead, expose them. Do you know how you expose the darkness? By being light. You expose the darkness by being light. You expose the darkness by simply being light in the world. Have you ever thought about that? Have you ever thought about that, that you expose the darkness by light? I remember, I'll, I'll you hold this up for a minute. I, I like that cool effect on the camera it has. Isn't that kind of cool? But what I want to share with you is this fact. Go back to my story of when I was camping. And do you know the cool thing about a flashlight, a really good flashlight, is it exposes the darkness. Because I don't know about you, but I've been walking in the woods at night, and those trees look like monsters. You can be walking, and if you're if you're not listen, if you're not focused on the light as you're walking down the path at night, you can start your brain can start taking on different things, and pretty soon there's all this stuff after you, whether it might have been just a magpie in the bushes. And so by being the light, you will expose the darkness. By being the light, you'll expose the darkness in your lives. Can I sh I'll show you a quick story here. I was, um, there used to be a TV show that I really loved. I would watch it. I'm not going to say the TV show, but it was a very popular TV show. And I would watch it and I would enjoy it. I would laugh at it. And then I'm reading through scripture and I think it might have even been in this book of Ephesians. And it's about exposing the darkness. And I said, Holy Spirit, can you please expose any darkness that I am participating in that I'm not aware of? I mean, the things that I'm doing that, as Paul says, I'm doing the things that I do not want to do. Are there things that I shouldn't be doing that I find myself doing Holy Spirit? And so I just went on my day, said a prayer. Here's a, here's a little side note. When you say a prayer, God hears it and God will answer it. So don't pray something that you really, truly not want answered. Carry on. And so I'm, I'm, it's it's evening. I'm I'm home from. Uh, I was going to Bible college at the time. I'm home from Bible college. And I'm sitting on the couch. I'm like, okay, got my popcorn. I'm going to watch my favorite show. And the show comes on, and I could no longer stomach it. I was like, what is that? And I began to see elements of the show that I never saw before. 
what the Holy Spirit was doing, because I prayed that prayer, Holy Spirit, show me some stuff. And so as I prayed that prayer, I was not aware. I, I prayed it like kind of, you know how we pray prayers all the time. You know, Lord, do this, Lord, do that. We really don't mean it. Well, the Holy Spirit called my bluff. And I began to see that show for what it was. And I could no longer watch that TV show. And I tried so hard to. But every time I tried to watch it, instead of laughing, I was, I was like, oh, that's awful. That's not laughing at the church. That's mocking the church. That's not lifting up family values. That's destroying family values. And so I had really had to pull back. And the Holy Spirit began to reveal in me things that exposing that darkness in that. Lastly, we need to be filled with the Holy Spirit. We need to ask the Holy Spirit to fill us up. Have you ever, have you ever taken a moment and said, Holy Spirit, come fill me up? Holy Spirit, please fill me up. Paul talks about, yes, there's the day of Pentecost where, we're, where they were initially filled. And for me, it, it was, it was in, in 2000 where I was filled with the Holy Spirit, began speaking in other tongues, and, and that empowered me to carry on my journey as a Christian. But we need to constantly be asking the God to fill us up, allow help, Holy Spirit, help us walk this life, help us live a, light, a life of light. And he gives us some practical things. He says, be careful how you live. Do not be like the fools, but like those who are wise. He, do you know what Paul's telling us? You have a part to play. Have you ever thought about that? You have a part to play. Too often what happens is, is, is we as Christians sometimes treat Christianity like this microwave. And we go, hey, God, I'm at the altar. Okay, zap me, Lord. Okay, good. I'm ready for the next week. And we forget that we have a part to play. We forget that we have a part to play in this. That we're not robots. That God's not going to force us to do something if we truly, really don't want to do it. And so we have a part to play in this. We have a part to allow God to pour into us. And we have to make choices to follow after him. Like Paul didn't say, um, he didn't say, you know, the whole God's gonna make you careful. God's gonna make you careful how you. He said, "Be careful. Make that choice." With this Corona nineteen, we've had to make choices that are not that popular, but we've had to make choices. We've had to not go out. My family and I had to cancel a, a trip we were looking forward to. Um, we've had you've had to make choices. We've had to put church online instead of meeting in the building. Because those are wise choices. In our lives, we have to make wise choices time and time again. Wise choices. I love verse 20. It says, Give thanks for everything to God the Father, for His glorious... Give, everything, give thanks to God for everything to God the Father in the name of His glorious Son, Jesus Christ. How many of you give thanks to God? Are we thanking God that we woke up this morning and we had breath? Are we thanking God that we have a place we can live? We have food in the cupboard? Are we thanking God that he is in control? That's a question um, I ask myself all the time as I was reading this passage. Lord, am I being thankful? You know, we'll come to church and we'll sing songs like, Thank you, Lord, for saving my soul. Or we'll say, Give thanks with a grateful heart. Give thanks to the Holy One. We'll sing songs like that. But are we truly thankful? Are we truly thanking Him for what we have? That's a sobering thought to think about. Because there's many times where I don't even think about thanking God. And I'm a pastor. How many times has God provided that I haven't thanked him? How many times has God given to you that you haven't thanked him? In this Corona-19 situation, how many of you are thanking God in your current situation? You know, we don't know what's going to happen. I don't, I don't, we don't know how long this is going to last. We don't know the impact on our economy. We don't know 
the impact at the end of the day, but are we thanking God that he's in control? Are we thanking God that he's working in this situation? We need to thank him. We need to thank him. And so, Father, let's just take a moment. Let's just take a moment. Let's take a moment and begin to thank him. Father, thank you. Lord, thank you for who you are. Thank you for what you're doing. Lord, thank you that you are moving in our midst. You are moving in our midst like we can't ever imagine. And so, Father, today, may we just have that heart of thankfulness. Father, may we have that heart to thank you in the midst of this Corona-19 situation. Lord, I just, I just ask that we would just begin to be thankful. That we would shine our light in our attitude, in our actions, and how we portray ourselves in today's world. How we portray ourselves in this situation as believers in Christ. And Lord, I pray, God, if there's any needs, Lord, you know what those needs are. Father, you know the needs that are before us, Father. Lord, I pray right now, Lord, for that, that, that single mom, Lord, who's, who's looking at everything going, how am I going to make ends meet? What happens if I get laid off? Give her strength, Lord. Father, I pray for that senior citizen, Lord, who's watching, Lord, that's paranoid that they're going to get sick and they're going to die. Lord, I pray you'd give them comfort. Lord, I pray for that student whose, whose whole plans were ahead of them and they were, they were planning on, on, on graduating and they were planning on going to university. And, and Lord, it seems like everything's in limbo right now. Father, just give them peace that passes all understanding. Thank you, Lord. Now, if you're watching today, uh, we're going to pause there today. I really feel that um, one of the things I want to try to do is online. I don't want to... I don't want to prolong things as much as they need to prolong. Um, I don't want to be preaching. At, on Sunday mornings, I usually preach about 45 minutes. But the pr thing is, is on Sunday mornings, I have an audience. Um, and, and Bible study is the same thing. I usually have interaction. We have question and answer. And so we're trying to, I'm trying to set up that we can do a, a ask the pastor sometime and have some live feed, whether it's through Zoom or, or Facebook Live or something like that. But perhaps you're watching this morning. And you have a prayer request. Perhaps you're, you're going through some difficult times and, and you need someone just to pray for you. I want to encourage you to email us. The email is going to pop on the screen now. Highway at mymts.net. Send an email that way. And we're happy to connect with you uh, with that as well. Um, perhaps you're watching and, and you've been listening and you've been like, I'm not sure what you're talking about. This, this faith, this, this, this Jesus and, and following him. Can I encourage you? Can I encourage you? Jesus loves you so much. He cares about you so much. Do you know what would make your day in the midst of this Corona-19 thing? Is if you came to him. If you asked Jesus into your heart. And all you got to do is say a simple prayer. I'm just going to say this prayer and I want you to repeat after me if that's you. Jesus, forgive me. Forgive me of all the stuff I've done. And I ask right now, Jesus, that you would come into my heart. That you would change me. You would make me new. And I thank you, Jesus, for dying on that cross for my sins. For all the wrongdoing I've done. Save me. Set me free. Amen. If you said that prayer as well, I want you to send me an email. I don't doesn't matter where you are in the world. Um, I want you to send me an email, highway at mymts.net, and I just would love to forward you some information to help you walk on your new Christian journey. And if you've been following in the Bible study, I want to encourage you. I want to encourage you. Here's my encouragement. I want to encourage you to be the light. Be the light. Be the light in your situation. Be the light in your family. Make choices, though they might be difficult. Make choices to glorify God in the midst of all that we are going through. Be blessed. Be blessed. Amen.